is to uh, analyze the Bible politically and not just through the eyes of theology and religion. And uh, I would like to discuss today a topic that has been uh, plaguing the people for, or should I say been plaguing people for a long time now, and that is violence. Um, <clears throat> people have been discussing violence in the cities, various cities throughout America and throughout the world. Uh, there haven't been a problem with violence, uh, more specifically in the slum areas, in the ghettos, and things like that. Uh, what I would like to say, just to cut it plain and simple, get right down to the point, uh, one of the reasons for violence in the poor areas uh, it's because of oppression. Now, that's a, a word that people probably really never bother to look in depth, but they may, they more than likely understand oppression isn't a good thing. However, it should be studied. And uh, this is what will allow us to really get down to the root of our violence in the city. Don't get me wrong. You have some violence that comes from recreation. Okay. Uh, you have had. Uh, not too long ago. Uh, 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 just a few decades ago. Where you had. Through recreation. You will have certain races. Who will come just through recreation. And lynch or castrate another. Or beat another. You know. Just through recreation. You have even in your neighborhoods where you have some might come from a middle class, but uh, he don't really feel uh, 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 identifiable within this middle class. So he find friends where possibly in a lower class areas and he or she becomes an individual who find themselves in violence and trouble. Oppression is the cause of it. Okay. Uh, you, you can get down to the root of it and you will find out it's really because of great oppression that is one of the causes, I should say, for violence in your cities. Um, I would like to look at a few things here. Uh, like I told you, we deal with the Bible, not just through religious eyes. Uh, we like to deal with the Bible practically and we like to deal with it as it teaches. And it teaches not just spiritual matters, but it also, in fact, it incorporates the spiritual matters in government and politics, okay? And here in the prophet Amos, he made a statement here uh, to the prophet, as the prophet made a statement to the rulers and to the kings who inhabited or ruled the earth at that time. And he made a call to some foreign countries. And prophet Amos, if you're not familiar with biblical teaching, prophet Amos was a farmer. He was called to go prophesy to the nation of Israel. And while he was prophesying, he said some very interesting things. Those of you who's not biblically inclined, then maybe you you will you could possibly relate when we deal with more in a political sense. Those of you who are biblically inclined, then you can all agree that um, the prophet Amos went to the nation of Israel to prophesy to them and tell them of their evils. And he went to the heads of state, which would have been the priest, you know, not the head of a church or your local synagogue or your, or your local chapel. At that time, 
the priests, the prophet, they were heads of state. Some of the some of the the uh, prophets were kings. Okay. So Amos went down and he wanted to let the people know there is a trouble in the land that is causing the creator to come down and do judgment. So here in Amos the third, Amos the third chapter. Amos chapter 3. I'm, I, I want to read this to you because it's very interesting. The decrees in which he made uh, in Amos the third chapter and uh, verse 9. And I may read it out of another, sometimes I may read out of a different version. Just it gives you the same, basically the same thing, but it makes people claim that they can relate better through English terminology, okay, or through modern English. However, we're going to read out of the King James here. Um, Amos 3 and 9. It reads, Publish in the palaces of Ashdod and in the palaces in the land of Egypt and say, Assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Samaria. So Amos is telling the kings and the rulers in Israel that look, I am about to publish and call the heathen or foreign countries to come witness something that's taking place in the land of Israel. Okay? So he's saying, look, Ashdod, Egypt, and he said what? He wanted to publish this in the palaces. Okay? This is what he wanted to do. Publish it in the palaces. Who dwell in the palaces, people? The, the people with money. Okay? The rich rulers. All right? And uh, the rich rulers is oftentimes synonymous with the oppressor because they have oppressed and exploited to get these riches. So he's telling the people here in Ashdod in Egypt, come down to the mountains of Samaria because it's something that you should see. And so I'm going to continue here. He said, publish in the palaces of Ashdod and in the palaces of, in the land of Egypt and say, assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Samaria. And behold, the great tumblers in the midst thereof, and the oppressed in the midst thereof. So tumblers is trouble, all right, unrest, uh, violence. And this is what you have today. The Apostle Paul said, you know, the writings in the scriptures of the prophets, they were our examples, okay? We look to that to see what to do, what not to do. What, what caused different situations here in this, in this modern day age, as we say now. If you search the prophets, you will find out there was the, the exact same things going on in other ages. And we can look and find out by reading the prophets and the uh, Torah and, and, and get an idea on why the problem existed and what we can do to solve these problems. However, we see, he said, go publish to the rich people. Go to the rich. Those are, are those who dwelt in the palaces. All right? And then have them come down upon the mountains of Samaria and look at the tumblers in the city or the violence or the unrest in the cities. Okay? And where did the violence or the unrest come from? The prophet Amos declared it... it the, the tumblers in the midst thereof, and the oppressed in the midst thereof. All right? So who's down there in the tumblers, in the violence? The oppressed. That's who's there. That's who is engaging in all of the trouble and turmoil. Notice this. For they know not to do right, saith the Lord who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. So what he's explaining is that even the rich, those who rule over the oppressed, they don't know to do right. And they store up violence. In this text, this violence represents unjust gain. If you look it up in Hebrew, it's a word that represents unjust gain. So the tumblers of the oppressed or the uneasiness and unrest of the oppressed, we find the root of this problem lies within the palaces of the rulers. 
and how they have gotten unjust gain upon the people and they have caused a lot of trouble in the land. And he told the rich to come down and behold this. And this is what we're saying today. That building a recreational center, planting more gardens, your recreational center just going to be stained with more blood. Your garden, the ground in the garden is going to receive more blood. All right. And your recreational center is going to be looted. All right. Your gardens. That will not solve the problem. Uh, and I'm not accusing anyone. All right. And I represent uh, an organization where we're not accusing anyone as far as the people who desperately search for a solution. What we're saying is, is that in order to find a solution, we have to understand the real enemies. And the real enemies isn't white, the real enemy isn't black, it isn't Puerto Rican, it isn't Chinese. It has nothing to do with race. The real enemies have to do with oppression. See, the enemy is a system. Until we understand the evils of the system, we're going to be fighting the air. Okay? We have to understand the system. There's something that has been created long ago. And it is a system of capitalism. All right. And this system has always bred oppression, violence, drunkenness, robbery, prostitution, all right, starvation. Okay? This system this this has been the roots of this system, or should I say the fruits of this system. So when we see the violence, when we see the drug trade, when we see the the, the prostitution. All right. It is because of a system that is extremely evil. You have to realize you're living in a system that legalizes or have justified. It is perfectly legal to do uh, injustice. All right. It's legal for the sake of profits to destroy families for gain, to destroy the water for gain, to destroy the air for gain, to destroy forests for gain, to destroy the oceans for gain, for digging in the earth for its oils, not what you need, but to exploit the people in the areas, to dig for your mines, of your, whether it's oil, whether it's copper, all right, whether it's whatever the raw resource is. The rich come in and exploit they bring out an over and abundance and des they destroy the earth for profits and gain. And it's legal. Okay? It is legal. Well, one of the byproducts of this great oppression and this great exploitation that has taken place is violence. Now you're looking at the children of the poor, the children of indentured servants. The children of slaves, all right? The white indentured servants who was fooled to come here to go work the land of the early Americas. The slaves who were robbed from the lands of Africa and from the lands uh, of the East to come here and be free labor, okay? And their children who later in the early 1900s and, in a, and going towards the mid-1900s fought for a living wage because after they abolished the plantation, so-called slavery, they began this new form of slavery in the form of these job interviews and this starvation wage that they wanted to pay people. They want to work people to death for more gain. They brought children in sweatshops, all right? It was not sanitary. The condition was unsanitary. It was extremely dangerous, and that still exists today, all right? And in the midst of these oppressed people, these superfluous people, these people who don't have any meaning. Now is great violence in the land. Amos declared that this was the purpose of the, the, the people to hear it in the palaces to come down and see the violence, or as Amos put it, the tumult in the land of the oppressed. Look, I'm going to read a little caption to you. <clears throat> 